Hello and welcome to Nick's Maths. Term 3, week 2, lesson 8. Today we are looking at chance. Yesterday we looked at probability and today we're looking at chance. Now, what is chance? Chance is concerned with concepts of randomness and the application of probability as a measure of how likely it is that a particular event will occur. Or to put it simply, the likelihood of an event happening. It's all down to chance. It is a familiar part of all children's lives from their earliest experiences of games and competitions to being asked to guess or estimate. Can we determine an outcome that solely relies on what we perceive as a chance event? Like rolling a dice. Well, yesterday, when we looked at probability, we flipped a coin a hundred times. 50 times, and we determined that it was up to chance whether it would land heads or tails. But the more flips that we did, the more likely it was to become more equal. Then we looked at rolling a dice, a single dice. And again, when we rolled it 10 times, there's a greater spread of um, probability. But when we rolled it 50 times, it was more spread out across the numbers 1 to 6. So today we're going to determine whether we can predict chance or chance events and we're going to do it by doing an activity that involves two dice, a ruler and a pen. Our learning intention, we are working out if there are ways to determine an outcome of an event when the components of that event rely on chance. Hmm. And we'll know that we can do that if we understand the concept of randomness. If we can give concrete reasons for a given outcome, if we can recognize that chance deals with uncertainty, and if we can develop realistic expectations about chance events. When we say realistic, we say, well, that's an even chance, or that's likely, or, you know, that's not likely, or that's impossible. Some difficulties that the students might encounter. Now, the students might have naive ideas and subjective impressions about chance events. The students might use language in daily life, but they might not give that any mathematical weight or gravitas. And the students, they need to explore when exploring chance. So this activity today takes a bit of endeavour, but it does prove that chance isn't as random as we think. The equipment you'll need. You'll need a pencil, a rubber, a ruler, and some sheets of paper. And you will need two dice. Two six-sided dice, to be precise. The maths language we're using today. Chance, a possibility of an event happening. Probability, the measure of the likelihood of something happening. Certain, something that is definitely going to happen. Impossible, something that definitely isn't going to happen. Experiment an activity for which the result is unknown, and outcome, the result of that experiment. So what you need to do is you need to watch the video attached that I've got from YouTube, and also if you need to stop and start and further explanations of the activity, then you can stop and start my video, which is attached at the top of the lesson. So here are your instructions, and it's important that you listen. In fact, if you could do this before we do the class tomorrow morning, it would be of great help. You need to draw a square with 49 cells. So that's a square with sides of 14 centimeters by 14 centimeters. Then you need to divide it every two centimeters horizontally and every two centimeters vertically. If you do this in your math book, that will help because your math book is lined. Along the top line, the horizontal line at the top, you are to write in the far right-hand corner the addition sign. And then write the numbers 1 to 6 across the top. And do the same vertically, coming down from the numbers 1 to 6 downwards. And I'll show you an example of that to help you with your, your process. So there's an example. Top right-hand corner, addition sign, 
Across the top, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, representing one dice, and the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, representing another dice. And in the cells, there are 49 cells. Once you've filled out the grid, oh, so what you do then is you fill out the grid. And this is how we do this. 1 plus 1, where they meet, equals 2. 1 plus 2, where they meet, equals 3. 1 plus 3, where they meet, equals 4. 2 plus 1 equals 3. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Where they meet, you write in the product of your addition. So you go vertical to horizontal all the way down until you've filled in the entire grid. And that should give you 36 numbers, which is the combination of two six-sided dice rolled together. We're going to prove in our lesson that rolling two dice is not as random as we think. So when we rolled one dice, we came to the conclusion that it was a random act on what number it would end up on. When we flipped a coin, we came to the conclusion that it was a random act, whether it landed on heads or tails. But today, we are going to discover that when we roll two dice, there is a greater chance of getting some numbers than there are others. And I've done the first one for you. There is no chance when you roll two dice of getting the number one when you add the two dice together. Because the biggest number you can get is two. So there's no chance of that. So that is impossible. Now, getting the number two, one plus one is two, we get that once. So there's a one in 36 chance of getting the number two. Then, as we go on, you'll discover that there's a greater chance of getting other numbers. And I would like you to discover what numbers they are. And I want you to represent them in fractions, because the grid itself is made up of 36, so your denominator is 36, and the number of, numbers, the number of times the numbers appear, that is your numerator. So if the numbers appear five times, there'd be a five in 36 chance of the number five appearing. And then you could try and simplify the fraction if you really wanted to extend yourself. All right, so I'll be on in class tomorrow at 10.15 doing this maths class on chance. So if you haven't started it, we can do it together. But it would be great if you could prepare your grid, 49 cells. And it needs to look like this. Questions. Do you think that chance events are random after doing this exercise? What were some of the difficulties that you encountered? It's kind of hard to draw a 49 cell grid, but if you use your math books, I did one in a math book and it worked out well. I just did it with each little cell representing uh, one space and I just did by seven by seven in my math book. What did you learn as a mathematician? How do you know what you have learned is correct? And can you predict the outcome of a random event with greater certainty now? Why do you think that's so? Thank you so much for listening. Take care. If you need to upload any worksheets, you can do it on the Compass Portal or you can forward it to my email. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great night. Stay safe.